We're gonna talk to some people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to Hello. some people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. We're gonna talk to some Hello. people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some Hello. people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. Cause it's whisper nose blank. Oh, hi guys. This week, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite blanking Christmas movie with one of my favorite blanking people on the whole blanking planet. But before we get to that, um, thank you for listening to the podcast. And if you like it or if you don't, please take a second to subscribe and review um, and, and just like the podcast. Um, it would be very, very helpful. Also, um, my name is Kristen. Hi, I'm a musician and a comedian and a Libra. <laughs> if you want to find me and follow me, uh, go to my website. It's kristenkey.com and uh, follow me on all my social media. I put out a lot of videos every Friday. I go live for Friday, live at five, and we have a really good time. Um, plus, I'm also on Cameo. So if you want to give someone a very unique and special and personalized gift, I like to write songs for people. So hit me up on Cameo. The whole month of December, I'm going to be doing holiday episodes. And this week, I've invited on one of my favorite family members. I mean, not that we rate them, but he's one of my favorites. It's my brother, Ben. And he's come on to talk about one of our favorite Christmas movies, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. So, hey, computer lady, play my interview with my smelly brother. Playing interview with Ben Key. He is so smelly. Gross. Hey, Ben. Thanks for joining me. Hey, sis. Glad to be here. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I see your tree in the background. It looks lovely. Yeah. My uh, my darling children, my tiny baby infant children did that. Aw, oh, tiny Tim and little Cindy who? Yeah. Cindy Ethel Woo-hoo. and Quayshawn. I forget their names. Well, anyway, happy holidays. I'm so glad you're joining me to talk about one of our all-time family favorite movies. Mm-hmm. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's a classic and it's a staple. It is. It has been a staple of our family. Like all the other movies, I feel like they run through. Some years we watch them, some years we don't. But this one has a very special place in our family. Every single year. Because we see ourselves as the Griswolds. Exactly. It, I, to me, it's the best of the vacation franchise. It's it's my <laughs> favorite. The The opening, we'll just go from the beginning. Because I just rewatched it just for this. Um, <laughs> so the opening has got the animated open with not Holiday Road like the other vacation movies started with, but this one had their own theme song called Christmas, Christmas Vacation. vacation. Uh-huh. Mavis Staples sang that song. Mavis Staples. Mavis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mavis yeah. Staples. Never heard you know, yet. You grew up in the 80s. You know Mavis Staples. Really? No. Okay. <laughs> what, I like I grew up. I have no idea who this is. So this must have been Mavis Staples' one hit wonder. Could be. Well, hip hip hooray! It's Christmas vacation. I love it. Was I hit wonder too? I think it should be played on more Christmas playlists. I'm gonna put it on all of my Christmas playlists right That's now. A really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Give Mavis Staples some royalty checks. Come like uh, what third quarter of next year? Well, probably not. Maybe her family. Oh. Yeah, she, she's in you, jail. You don't know that. No, I don't. <laughs> you don't know anything about Mavis Staples. <laughs> so it starts with this animation, which I think sets the tone for the whole movie because Santa's coming. But Santa, at every turn, hits disaster. He falls. He's electrocuted. He's, I mean, everything. Everything goes wrong for Santa. He's Clark Santa. He is. He represents the spirit of Clark Griswold. Yeah. Best of intentions, yes. worst of executions. Yes, that's a, I think that's the best way to sum up Clark Griswold right there. And the name Key also falls into that <sighs> blanket. <laughs> it really does. We try so hard. We do. We I my Molly and I looked up the other day on Facebook. There was this uh, your zodiac sign by a Muppet, and <laughs> I got um, Scooter. I was Scooter. Scooter. That's who it was. Um, because I wanted to be somebody else, but I got Scooter. Um, I was on the cusp of Scooter and someone else. Interesting fact about Scooter, while we're on this tangent, did you know who voiced Scooter? I do not. Mavis Staples. (laughs) (laughs) That's not true. And I was like, really? No. Okay. So I got Scooter, and what it said below it was, has the best of intentions, but typically makes things worse. Right. And I said, that's that's not, I mean, that's not untrue, but that doesn't feel fair. Well, he tries to shortcut people's feelings to make people feel good. Yeah. And in real life, you learn as a grown up, you can't do that. You have to 
let things play out. I, I never learned that, but you're supposed to learn. That. Supposed to learn that, but yeah. in our in our family, we have we have a lot of uh, Scooter and, and Clark Griswold. So the movie starts with what I think is like the cold open to the movie, which is because we haven't established the plot yet. It's just right. it starts with their family car on their way to somewhere. And Clark and Ellen are singing Christmas carols. I've never seen a movie establish so much of the main characters in 20 seconds of the film opening. Yeah. You know exactly who all four of those characters are in the first 30 to 45 seconds of the show. And they stay true to that for the whole movie. I think, and they do it with one, Oh, come let us adore him. All in one last yeah. chorus of a song, you establish who these four people are. Right. That it's Christmas and that two people, well, one person's all about it. One person's going along and then two people are, are hostages. Right. Yeah. And you have the enabling wife. Yeah. Who will, who, will, who will sing with him to his heart's content. I said to his heart's content. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. She's, she's pretty much over it, but she'll do it because she loves him. Anyway, she continue. loves him. Yeah. And in yep. the back seat, we reveal uh, Juliet Lewis and J uh, John Mark Galecki. John Mark Galecki, yeah. So Juliet Lewis and John Mark Galecki are in the back seat. Two, the kids went on to have better careers than the parents. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that was pre natural born killer Juliet Lewis. That's they went that's, in completely separate directions. Those kids. I can't tell if that's pre or post Cape Fear, but she was nominated for an Oscar for Cape Fear. I think it was the same year or the year after Cape Fear. Wow, she was having a good yeah. year that year. So yeah, yeah. and uh, John Mark Galecki went on to uh, he's now making or he during Big Bang Theory's biggest years was making nine hundred grand an episode. My goodness, I well, know he, he was in Roseanne for a long time. Yeah, he was David on Roseanne. I don't know that I'll make nine hundred thousand dollars over the course of my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I die and my kids die, my kids and I together will not have made nine hundred thousand dollars. So, do you know who probably also didn't make nine hundred thousand dollars? Mavis Staples. Mavis Staples. Yeah. <laughs> who knows? Maybe she did. I this bet she a, did. Yeah. I mean, she might have. She gets thirty-two cents every time somebody watches that movie. But that's probably probably not true. Like most of our facts today on this show, it's probably right. not true. But no we fact like check me, yeah, yeah. Fun facts. They're fun because they're not true, and we didn't fact that, fact check them. So, so the car right. ride um, immediately goes bad when Clark feels like he's been uh, the victim of a road entanglement that did not go his way. Right. But it also, like, you look back on it and go, he made this situ like this situation wouldn't have been bad right. had he not provoked the driver. And that's who Clark Griswold is. If there is a decision to be made, and you can go this way or this way, one of them is the right way and one of them is the wrong way, Clark will inevitably, unerringly go the wrong way. Another fact, but this one's true, the truck they're driving in that, uh, the old truck, the rednecks are driving yeah. in, that's the exact same pickup truck from uh, Overboard with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Oh, I didn't know that. I love that movie. Another they're bringing classic. her home from the, from the boat. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I believe you. Whether that is real. And that or not. means Christmas, right there. It does mean Christmas. That is the spirit of Christmas. Yeah. So Clark gets into a uh, a road rage incident that they end up stuck under a logging truck, and I don't know that anybody's ever tested this to see if that's possible. I always wish MythBusters would have done something with that. Is that sure possible? Yeah. How did they possible. get that car to that truck? You know, the secret is high logs, short car. I mean, I get physics. Physics is what you're saying. Um, and we still don't even know where they're going yet. Right. All this has happened. So much has happened in a short period of time. We don't know where We've they're going We've just covered yet. about 90 seconds of the show. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And uh, there's action. There's an action sequence. The car, as it's done in uh, vacation, the car launches over a mm -hmm. seemingly small mound way further than a car should go. The car lands, and we find out where they are. They're at the tree lot um, because they crash through the tree lot sign. And then... Uh, um, but we take a little left turn because Clark Griswold cannot do things like, like we go get a Christmas tree every year. We go to the lot, we pick out our favorite tree. We take a picture by a tree. Molly takes a picture by the biggest tree in the lot. I take my picture by the smallest tree in the lot. We pretend like those are the ones we're getting. When you stop and think about it, the fact that they even went to a tree lot in the first place or ended up at a, at a tree lot is completely ironic because he has no intention of getting a tree from a tree lot. 
<laughs> That's just like where the car landed. To start as any to walk into the woods. We'll start where the trees are easy, easily accessible, and then walk a mile into the woods to get our tree. Yeah, he he finds the tree. It's massive. It's the biggest tree in the forest, and uh, he forgot the most important forgot thing. He, saw. He, yeah, he forgot the saw. Yeah, <laughs> and then just the slow cut of from roots to tip. <laughs> the car. <laughs> covered in christmas tree that no you couldn't you couldn't drive with that on your car thanks for the name drop that's the name of my book that i'm just putting out from roots to tip by benjamin roots to tip it's a it's a, a guide to unhealthy living hip hip hooray okay so they Opera. get home they have a tree that's much larger than the house obviously um but in answer to the question posed by the neighbor where are you going to put a tree that big griswold i yeah, bend over and i'll show you right <laughs> it shows the relationship that Clark and Ellen have with the neighbors. Neighbor, yeah. To which his neighbor responds, you got a lot of nerve talking to me that way, Chris Wells. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. And that's where we see Julia Louis Dreyfus. Um, she appears in the movie as <laughs> being insulted by Clark. And so we see that it's not just the guy on the road. It wasn't a freak accident. Clark has issues with everybody, everywhere he goes. The tree does not fit um, at all, at all. Um, which is another hilarious classic scene. But that night laying in bed, this is where the plot of the movie gets revealed. Him and Ellen laying in bed, him covered in sap sticking to the magazine he's reading, and they both reveal the whole family is coming to Christmas. And Ellen, the realist, says, you know, this is a lot. You know, um, you know how you get. And Clark does not know how he gets. No. No, he just knows that he has great intentions and wants to do the best for everybody all the time. He does not, he cannot fathom that there will be consequences to having all, like his parents and her parents and the kids. And then the Christmas dinner is going to have the extended. He just can't see that as being a bet. The more the right. merrier. The plot is revealed. And then the rest of the movie is told basically through an advent calendar. Um, each day is opened up to reveal a new day. Um, and it starts on December the 14th. Well, that night, the night of the 14th is when the entire family arrives, which I don't know if anybody else's red flags went up, but, but if you're having the entire family, both sets of in-laws under the same roof, 10 days early. It was a long trip. It yeah. was a long visit. We're lucky to get three to four days. and That seems long sometimes. I mean, I've stayed at my in-laws. We go up there and we'll stay a full seven, a full seven or so days. But that's just like, but like, I, I, I'm a, like it wouldn't be like me and my parents with right. my in-laws. That's just a lot of people for Weird. 10 days. That's strange. Yeah. And you can see the tension in the house is already at a 10 from the time they all walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really doesn't drop. No, it never it drops. Shifts. It just shifts from player to player. On the 15th. Clark decides, he figures out what his plan's going to be to avoid all this. He's going to put up this, he's going to take a situation that could be simplified and makes it more complex. Right. Because he wants to go outside. He just wants out. He wants he out. Wants this out. is too much. This is too much. And so he goes out and, and orchestrates, not just, I'm going to put lights on the house. That would be too, that would be the sane, rational thing. I'm going to put up some lights. Right. Is I'm going to put up the most lights anybody's ever put on a house. That'll, that'll make the situation better. Right. Right. Best intention. Right of that, it'll alleviate all the stress and all the anxiety by just having all the lights. Yeah. And a, a moving, heartfelt moment that'll uh, ease all the tension. Things are bad out the gate. Out the gate. He can't work the staple gun. Staples his shirt up. Falls off the left. I mean, this is this is classic what happens when dad right. gets on the roof. Right. Slapstick ensues. Yeah. Keep dad off the roof. And if, <laughs> if you're listening, no, dad. Get off the roof. You can hire someone. No, to father. Do and our dad, please, please, no longer get on the roof. I remember the year that we decided to start putting up Christmas lights and we had the staple gun and mm -hmm. I would go on the roof and dad would go on the roof. And then, you know, I leave home and I hear from mom, oh, dad fell off the roof. I'm like, <laughs> it's just a matter of time, you know, you know, you yeah, know. You, you, the odds are, you know, over a long enough timeline, he's going to fall off. He's going to fall so. off the roof. Let's the the 17th. We see Clark at work. Clark's still at work on the 17th. And he's trying to, he's got a big he's presentation. To buy a pool. It, what is it, a non nutritive cereal varnish? Yeah, a crunch enhancer. Yeah. I've always wondered what that, what that would be like. <laughs> no matter how long it stays in milk, it doesn't get soggy. Wow. That's, it's brilliant. 
The 18th is the day that he's finished with his lights. He's put up all the lights. They don't go on. Once again, he has the will, he has the heart, but he doesn't have the skill or the knowledge <laughs> right. of how to do it. You know, the family, not really disappointed, surprised. This is, this is what Clark right. does. And not only are they not surprised, they knew it probably wasn't going to work. They gave him a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> it still looks good if they're not lit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the morning of the 19th, Clark's hiding Christmas presents gets stuck in the attic. The attic scene. Oh, I love that scene. Oh, makes me cry. Ray, Ray Charles. Oh. oh, yeah. What a wonderful feeling. <laughs> the, uh, the harmonies on that was uh, Mavis Staples. Mavis, oh, Mavis, fun. yeah. He was up there long enough to put together a home movie. Reminiscing about the good old days, which is what he's trying to recreate in the first place. And fall through the ceiling. And fall through the ceiling. Which our dad has done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least once. Yeah, or yeah. Twice, I think twice, if I remember right. It might be twice, but uh, there Every was time that scene comes on and we're watching it, mom always says, why doesn't you just go down through the hole in the ceiling? He's got to patch it anyway. No, then you just go to a trunk and find a shawl and start watching movies and crying. That's what I would do. That's true. So the family comes home from shopping, um, and this is the night that, Clark finally, he has, he has his first meltdown of the movie because he cannot figure out how to get the lights going. They come on, but then they go right off again. And then in his moment of desperation, lights come on because his wife is a very smart woman. And uh, she, she puts two and two together. Yeah. So in this moment of his triumph, he saved Christmas. Everything's great. They're standing among his well-wishers in the family, basking in the glow of this beautiful light display. We could see Cousin Eddie that we haven't seen since the first vacation. Right. That we weren't expecting, that we didn't really remember until we saw him. He wouldn't be more surprised if he woke up tomorrow and his face was sewn to the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they brought snots. You know, he's got a fungus they ain't identified yet. <laughs> everything in Clark's perfect world has just, I mean, everything's, it's gone. And now it's just, I think he's in survival mode for the rest of the movie. So the 24th is when the rest of the family finally arrives, which is Ellen's older relatives, um, Uncle Lewis and Aunt Bethany. They get there, they have their Christmas dinner or their Christmas Eve dinner, I guess, which is their tradition. Um, on Christmas Eve, we have Mexican food. I don't know if you guys do anything for Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Pizza. I think we usually do pizza. Okay. Okay. Oh, this, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Christmas, but they do their full Christmas dinner on Christmas Eve, it looks like. Um, and yeah, again, it's do. another one of those scenes where everything is perfect in his mind. They're all sat at the table, polite. He clinks his glass. Like, everything's perfect. Everything's you get, perfect. You get a half second, and then we have Grace. <laughs> Bethany can't remember Grace. Now we're saying the Pledge of Allegiance. The next thing you, do I say that word weird? Allegiance. Then the next thing you uh, know, the European way of saying it, <laughs> the turkey is beyond dry. I've never seen anything like that happen before. It looks so good on the outside. It looks it does. I told you we put it in too early. <laughs> <laughs> nope, there's too, a heart. <laughs> they're eating their jerky turkey. Um, the dog gets into the trash. Lewis burns the Christmas tree. So Clark loses it, gets a chainsaw. Cuts right. down the neighbor's tree. Now the, the neighbor's the second window that's been broken by Clark at the neighbor's right. house. The Christmas tree he picked, there's a squirrel. Clark decides his plan is to catch it in his coat and hit it with a hammer. Hit it with a hammer, yeah. Yeah, there's so many other better ideas if you had a squirrel in that. I mean, I would have hidden in a room till the squirrel died. <laughs> like, I don't, you I don't open the door and you chase it out. That's, which is ultimately what happened. That yeah. That's a good idea. Or what dog. I've done what I do with spiders is like try to get a bucket and try to put the bucket over it and then have a piece of paper and then carry it outside with my bucket and my paper like you do with a spider. That's but I don't plan. Think... Thank you. The squirrel gets the, the the it destroys the entire house. I mean, antique plates, everything. This is this is where the house it's just a disaster. But they do get the squirrel out. He opens the door and um, standing at the front door right there was the neighbor who finally had enough gonna give clark a piece of her mind and right. then she's you know attacked by a squirrel by a squirrel <sighs> goes back to her passive soft husband and just decks him which well deserved yeah and you think it can't get any worse than that you cannot get any worse than that christmas is hell 
but that's when it gets worse because there's a knock at the door and Clark gets Christmas his bonus. Christmas, Christmas bonus. bonus showed up. Yeah. And his bonus was, is a little smaller than he expected. Wasn't what he expected. It's a jelly of the month club. <sighs> yeah, and that's when he I thought it'd be awful. I mean, I do like jelly, but given that he put down a seventy five hundred dollar deposit on a pool, I'm assuming his bonus was pretty large. Oh yeah, for sure. Like you gotta imagine his his bonus has gotta be like like what, ten or fifteen grand? At least, if not more. Yeah. That's you a big bonus. The neighborhood they live in, he probably makes big bucks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, a Jelly of the Month Club, although Eddie does point out it is the gift that keeps on giving the whole year round. <laughs> but that's when that's when Clark, I think, has a... Uh, uh, it's one of those contained meltdowns that are almost scarier when you see one do it than the right. big throwing. Yeah, huh, everything's fine. Okay, you know what I want? You know what I want? I want my boss. Home um, breakdown. Yeah, all he wants is his boss, uh, Ed Shirley, with a the big ribbon on his head, and uh, and Eddie here feeling in the Christmas spirit. All he hears is, "Oh, that's what he wants for Christmas." That's free. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> Next thing you see, you see the RV leaving. In the meantime, Clark Clark gets things back on track, reading the night before Christmas, and that's that's when that's when he finds out that his brother in law has kidnapped his boss. So it's their family's first kidnapping. Right. Um, <laughs> in any real situation, I think there would be uh um more consequences. I mean, there were consequences because the SWAT team does come because uh Yeah. Um they they sustain some damage to the structure of their home every window in their house and the neighbor's house have been repaired multiple times now if you think about right. it right right yeah the window repair company in chicago that that services their area it was making making out like bandits well think about because when he when he un unveiled the christmas tree that's three windows right there mm -hmm. the neighbor lost a window with the Why? icicle lost yeah. another window with the christmas sure. tree and then the swat team now comes through multiple windows of the neighbors multiple windows at the griswold yeah every every window of griswold every window yeah so a lot of, a lot of broken windows he does get his bonus somehow yes they convince his boss that who had suspended the bonuses this year without telling anybody uh they convince him that uh this is a little man that works for him and who really count really matter and he didn't really connect with the little man until he got abducted by one and so now he Eddie really he, did save he, the day. He really did, yeah, because he got the bonus reinstated. Yeah, and the bonus, he he said, I'm, I'll add an extra, what do you say, 20%? Yeah, whatever you made last year, add 20%. That'll cover the windows. Yeah. Yeah, that'll cover all the house damage. Everybody's everybody's great. And, of course, in the, in the, in the end, everybody is standing outside, you know, watching the beautiful lights above. And it's, again, another one of those perfect moments that things are perfect. And he, you can tell on his face, the smile on his face, he has a sense of completion uh, and a sense of right and a sense of good. And it doesn't matter what had happened up to that point. He wasn't even thinking about it. He's an in the moment kind of person. He plans he is ahead. a very in the moment and kind of And when things guy. are good for any small period of time, that's what he wants. And the whole thing ends in a giant explosion. Giant fireball, Santa Claus and the reindeer fly through the sky. Oh, and it's a perfect movie. And we're back to Mavis Staples. Hip hip parade for Christmas vacation. It's time for five quick questions. I have five quick questions. Since you are an expert on this movie, and I think we've established that, five quick questions about National Lampoon's Christmas vacation. Question number one is What is Clark Griswold's middle initial? W. Easy, easy. There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're Simple. starting out. We're just warming up here. Okay, <laughs> question one. He nailed it. Um, okay. Um, in the beginning of the movie, what did Frances tell Ellen she had? She got hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mother. <laughs> Such a small part that makes me laugh every time. Question number three. Uh, when Clark is going to pick out his family Christmas tree, why can't Audrey see the Christmas tree when the family finally picks it out? Her eyes are frozen. <laughs> That's correct. Question three. That's right. Uh, Audrey can't see it right now. Her eyes are frozen, dear. Um, question four. Question four. What secret ingredient did Aunt Bethany add to her jello mold? Uh, that was cat food. Correct. That is correct. Eddie liked it. All right. Your last 
question. This would be a perfect score for you on Christmas okay. vacation. When Clark decides to decorate the house, how many Christmas lights does he put up? Oh, 22,500? No. Close. 25,000. Oh, 25,000. Yeah. You did it. You got four out of five. Excellent. Well, you're clearly an expert on Christmas vacation. And now is my favorite part of the show. And that's when I ask you if you would play a rad lib with me. And now it's time for rad libs. I want to play a rad lib. Yay! Now, I know you've played a rad lib before because we've done one together. But just for the one. people that are just joining in, hi, guys, you haven't missed much. But a yeah, rad lib is a lot like a mad lib, except for um, I wrote it and I don't want to get sued by mad lib. But basically, I've written a story and I've left out some parts of speech. If you give me those parts of speech together, we're going to make a hilarious story. Ben, are you ready to play? I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, my God. Okay. I need an adjective. Uh, brown. Excellent. I need a verb. Squirt. Excellent. Uh, I need a holiday. Um, Arbor Day. Excellent choice. Our family celebrates that in our hearts all year long. I need a plural noun. Uh, gravies. Excellent. I need a verb ending in ing. Uh, humping. Excellent. Uh, a number. Seven and a half. Nice. That actually fits right there really well. Um, I need a room in the home. The safe room. Uh, a smell. A smell? A smell. Could be aardvark. Any smell. Aardvark. <laughs> what does it smell like? I don't know. A smell could be as basically a noun. You're right. You're right. It's a smell. Yeah. Um, a verb ending in ing. Um, crapping. Yes. A city. Des Moines. A singer or band. Michael Bublé. Plural noun. Oh, shits. As in, I have the shits. Sorry. Um, an article of clothing? Drawers. Plural noun? Feet. Food? Meatloaf. A liquid? Pus. Oh, I don't like that, but I said it. You said <laughs> a relative? <laughs> Mavis Staple. The singer of the classic song Christmas Vacation. Mavis Staple. Vacation. Yeah. Um, a number? Four. Team. An adjective? Boiling. Plural noun? Boils. It's like tumbling tumbleweeds. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> An increment of time. Six hours. All right. We have a story. Fantastic. Let's do it. Ben and Kristen Key are going to rescue Christmas with this story. This story, written specifically for you, is called Hosting a Big Family Christmas. I love it. By Ben Key. This year, we've decided to invite my whole brown family for Christmas. <laughs> I love it already. I'm so excited, I can't squirt at night. <laughs> I started decorating the day after Arbor Day. I've strung up my Christmas gravies outside. It's so beautiful at night to see them humping. <laughs> what kind of gravy is that? <laughs> I really wanted our house to feel like Christmas, so I got a seven and a half foot tree and put it right in the middle of the safe room. Oh, yeah. For the whole world to see. That's where that's where the tree goes. Um, because it's real, the whole house smells like aardvark. I can't wait to have the whole family together singing Christmas carols, like Santa Claus is crapping to town. <laughs> Old little town of Des Moines. <laughs> and my favorite holiday song by Michael Bublé, All I Want for Christmas is Shits. <laughs> Well, eat enough gravy, you'll get your wish. <laughs> Must have had a very constipated Thanksgiving. Santa don't bring shits to kids who don't eat gravy. <laughs> <laughs> On Christmas Eve, we will hang our drawers by the fire so Santa can fill them with his feet. <laughs> Before bed, I'll put out a plate for Santa filled with meatloaf and pus. <laughs> Santa skipped our house for a few years. God, I hate Santa. No oh, thanks. Full of meatloaf and pus this year. <laughs> then as I go to sleep, surrounded by my mom, dad, Mavis Staple, and 14 <laughs> cousins, I will say, boiling Christmas to all, and to boils a good six hours. <laughs> oh, I kind of petered off there at the end, but uh, that was a good one. I like that. That was a good one. It was, I, I have so the far. holiday spirit now. Interview complete. Filling Ben's stocking with poop.
Wow, thanks, computer lady. I You need a therapist. Um, thanks, guys, for listening to this podcast. Um, again, if you like it, please uh, like it and subscribe to it and share it and review it. Yeah, and if you want to drop us a line, we have an email. It's Kristen at KristenKnowsBlank.com. Let me know if there's some guests that you want to see coming up, uh, any questions for past guests, or any, any topics that you want to hear us discuss in future episodes. Um, guys, find me, follow me. My website's KristenKey.com. Um, find me online. Um, I'm on Cameo, so hit me up for gifts and um well thanks for listening until next time bye we're gonna talk to some people gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna talk to some people gonna learn a lot of stuff we're gonna talk to some people gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna talk to some people gonna learn a lot of stuff because Kristen knows